No, you can't open doors. No, 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 no. Not in memories. Oh, is this him? No, that's not our buddy. Oh, maybe that's him? No. One, two, three, four, five, six. No, sorry. <laughs> Words. Where the fuck is this guy? So there's four over here. I'm looking for one more. Hey, what's going on, Hushal? Welcome to the stream. Good to see you. There's one more guy here somewhere. Does anyone see him? Am I blind? There's someone under the cannon, but that's a corpse, so I don't think that counts. That's this guy, Abraham Akbar. He must be here somewhere. I see it. Where is it? Because I don't see it. Blown outside? Yeah, that's what I was hoping for. So I could see. But I don't see anything outside. It looks like it's over there, right in front of me. Like ha someone is hanging backwards. But my character doesn't focus on it when I right click. Let's assume that that's it, and maybe we can go to this guy instead? I don't know. Maybe that's what we're supposed to be doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it must be. So that's him right there. So what happened to him outside? Did he get blasted or did he get destroyed? Like he got pulled by a beast, I guess, right? I don't know. It's very hard to say what even happened to the guy. So he was outside. I guess he got, he drowned? Must be, because there's no corpse on board. Yeah. Who the fuck is this, though? So... This is one of the gunners. We don't know who this is. Hey, we only have one page right now, though, so it's only a few options, I suppose. Only a couple of options remaining. At least that explains how he died. So he's chilling here on the floor.
If he's chilling here on the floor and he's hanging out in this deck, he's probably a seaman, I guess. So I'm gonna assume George Shirley. Is this the Sierra Leone guy? Yes, okay. <sighs> two more fates, correct? Wait, it's now giving me two? Surely it's him, right? All right. Was that the last two? Wait, no, there's at least one more. Uh... So wait, how many do I have left? Two? No, I actually have fill still four of them left, I guess. Maybe some of the ones I entered are incorrect. That would make sense. Uh, this is probably the Chinese guy. That's what I would imagine. Because he was helping out the other... People from Taiwan, I think. Dun, 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 dun. If he's bald, he's Chinese. Yeah, apparently that's what this game is trying to tell me. No, I don't think that's true. But he is... Like, I believe in, in a couple of the scenes, we saw him hanging out with the royalty. And they spoke Chinese. So I'm fairly sure that that must be it. Okay, so I've solved all of these. You're also Chinese and you're also Balt. Well, there you go. <sighs> Russian guy with a beard. Apparently all of it is holding true so far. So this is one of the last guys I... I I don't know. Barished in this one. That is Gunner's Store. Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember this guy getting shot. Uh, I remember this guy getting shot. He got shot through the wall. We just didn't know who it was. So this is part seven. Maybe I can do part six. And then see if there's someone walking around with a gun. Well, you can see someone shooting through the wall. But we couldn't identify him from the other side. Um, so to clarify, I can show you guys real quick. If you go around... Wait, was it one level down? I think it's one level down. If you go around the side... Right over here... There's one person. And this one was a little bit tricky. But I'm fairly sure he got stuck. He got shot. It's a little hard to see. There's a big-ass spider. But someone's over there trying to shoot the spider. And he misses, and he guns this guy through the wall instead. Sick wall bang over here, okay? No map hacks, no wall hacks, none of that. He's just fucking missing. Shoot the damn thing! Shoot the damn thing! Someone shoot the damn thing. They make for the Lazarette secure to hold. Yeah, so I don't know who this is. I don't think we can find out either. Yeah, yeah, exactly. This is where we find out the purser is over here somewhere. 
Yeah, this is the guy hiding in his room. <laughs> I don't know who this is, though. And I don't know who he got shot by. Well, we're on a boat, right? I'm assuming the boat is not going to be very stable. Maybe he did hit the thing, but, you know, the bullet kept going, yeah. Okay. So is there someone with a, with a gun over here? Is that the purser? No. Anyone here with a gun? I don't see anyone with a gun here. No, I don't know. I don't think it was a hand cannon. I'm pretty sure it was a gun. You think this is a gun? Pretty sure this is something they use on the... Oh no, I think it is a gun actually. So who was shooting in- oh, I think you're right actually. Subscriber detected. I think it is a hand cannon, yeah. After eight months, school custodian wants me in for an interview for a new job position. So finally a career and not a dead end job. Hey, nice, strategist. Good luck, good luck with the interview. So there's a guy, the bosun here, who's shooting, and then there's another guy, a carpenter. Winster? So, is it a guy with a hat? In the previous scene? I don't think so. Thank you, by the way, for the resub, uh, strategist. 62 months is a long time. So we need to, I think, figure out who shot by looking at whether or not he's wearing a hat. It's either the, the carpenter or it is the bosun. That's hard to say, but he's not wearing a hat. Yeah, he looks bald. So maybe it is the bosun. There's only a few options remaining at this point. Actually, I can probably just brute force it this way. So there's still a couple that I filled in though that may not be correct. Um, hmm. He's wearing white pants. Uh, it must be one of those two guys, though. I'm fairly sure it's one of those two guys. I don't think we have to, like, think too hard about that sort of thing, because otherwise it would, get, it would get a little bit confusing. White pants. Was any of them wearing white pants in this other scene? Yeah, yeah, the bosun. It's the bosun. It's the bosun. Um, so if that's the case... This guy was shot by the bosun. 
It's just that something else is wrong, because this is not his name. He's not bald? He's wearing a hat. He must be bald underneath the hat. Did he take off his jacket, you think? I don't know, bro. It's actually really... I don't know. Did he have a beard? No, he didn't have a beard. Like, it's very hard to see in the previous scene, though. Did he grow a beard? Oh, fuck. Okay, fine. We'll go one further back. Maybe it becomes more obvious at that point. <laughs> I thought you guys just took off his hat. Uh, do I have to leave this one first? Or like, what do we do? Kind of aggressive. Bro, this is him running around with the fucking hand cannon though. Now his pens don't look very wide anymore. Here's another guy with a gun. Wait, maybe this is him. The bosun's mate. Charles? Fucking Charles, man. I knew it. That seems more correct. I think it's Charles. Don't trust the Charles guy at all. Yeah. The hand cannon problem was... Wait, did it tell me everything was correct? Did it just tell me all of them was correct? I think it did. All right. So we got all of it done, except for one chapter. There's nothing left to do on the Obra Din. Aw. So there's one chapter that Henry tells us about at the very beginning of the game. I trust that you now find yourself aboard the Obradin. I expected this date to come, and my very intention was to tell the ship's strange tale within the pages of this book. Regrettably, failing health has allowed me to uh, produce only the basic outline that follows. Your presence on the Obradin is critical. I leave the discovery of its fate and the completion of this book in your hands. The next few pages will seem bewildering at first. All will make sense in time. Use the pocket watch to determine the identity and the fate of everyone aboard. Complete each chapter accurately and return the book to me by guaranteed post to the French Office of Affairs in Morocco. The quote-unquote bargain chapter will remain unknown to you. I possess the details within, but have elected to keep them private for now. So that is chapter 8, bargain, and it says, this chapter will remain unknown until you leave the ship and return the book to me. So we've completed the book. I think that means we leave. Very nice. I gotta run to the bathroom, though, before we leave. Ma, I gotta go to the bathroom. I don't wanna... <laughs> I don't wanna leave yet, okay? Otherwise, I gotta pee on the right over there. I don't wanna do that. Guys, especially for our trip to Morocco, I have soda. I don't really drink a lot of soda, but we had some in the fridge. Ay, yeah, yeah. Mmm. Very nice. I think this is where I go, right? <sighs> Am I trying to gain weight? No, this is Coca-Cola Zero, though. Hashtag not sponsored. We should go. Storm's nearly about, so we won't be coming back. Hmm? Oh, I think this is the chapter closing. Finally. Sit down so you don't fall out. <laughs> New subscriber detected. Hey, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Gifting us up the heel. Yeah, I wish I had a Coca-Cola sponsorship. That sounds great. 
I mean, all of you guys drink Coca-Cola anyway, so, you know. <laughs> or at least one of the, you know, company's drinks. Hmm. One week later. The Honorable East India Company. Insurance assessment for the good ship Obra Din. A victim of calamitous events at sea. Prepared by the company office of investigation. Damaged in Squall, Atlantic. Sunken storm, Valmuth. Payout claimed 20,000 pounds. Claim 20,000 pounds. Cargo, all lost. Payout claimed 5,000 pounds. Also claimed, all right. And cargo, crown. Payout claimed for restitution, 3,000 pounds. Captain Robert Wittert. A state forwarded to or forfeited to the crown. A state fined 25 pounds. A state fined 100 pounds. Criminal findings, murder of crewmate, two, attempted mutiny, theft of cargo. Is this, tw it's 23 pages long. So wait, who got the most kills? The captain has four, that's pretty sick. Oh my god, I don't want to read all this. Am I an insurance officer? Is that what I'm doing? Like, I go out to try and figure out the claims? Fate illness. Estate awarded outstanding wages 15 pounds. Total claimed 29,285 pounds. A preliminary draft of this assessment has been approved by the Royal Trade Guaranter? I don't know. On behalf of this honorable of the Honorable East India Company, I certify all statements of accurate or are accurate and declare this matter closed in its entirety. There it is. I signed. 60 deaths or so, 60 something deaths. 29,000 pounds, boys. The pocket watch remains in your possession. All right. The book returns to its original owner, Henry Evans, in Morocco, as requested. Oh, on the beat, man. Did you feel that? So what about the last chapter? One year later. Henry? Henry, is this your place? Ma, the door! Inside. I'll be turning in now. Tea's in the kitchen. That's a bit sus. Chief Inspector, I write to you with the unfortunate news that Dr. Evans has passed away. He succumbed to his illness shortly after receiving your package. He was very pleased with your correspondence and asked that this or his gratitude be expressed by returning the book to you along with the means to complete it. As for the three of us that remain, the Obra Din is a distant memory and a dreadful chapter in our lives that we wish to forget. Do not write back. Regards, Jane Burt. Okay. This still belongs to you now. Please finish it. I 
I should end all my emails like that. Yeah, put it on your email signature. Best regards, loco. Don't write back. <laughs> Please tweet me instead. All right, what's this? Why is there... Is that the guy's... Is that the, the, the stripped right hand of the... No, this is a left hand. Was it left hand or right hand? I don't know. All right. That looks right to you. Let you think. Where is the key? To that door. Gone. There's no time. We need to go. Right. What are you up to? Nothing good. Pull it up to right now. What's going on? Henry Evans. Okay, so that's the guy who sent us on this quest. He guns down whatever this is. This is the third mate, Martin, over here. Not having the best of times. Is that the monkey? Why the monkey, bro? Right, who was this? This is the Captain Stewart. Philip. Why are you shooting the monkey? A friendly but not entirely pleasant monkey companion was sacrificed in the pursuit of knowledge. There you are, collect your things. We where's the key? To that door? Gone. Damn, there's no time we need to go, right? What are you up to? Nothing good. So is this the Lanza, whatever it's called? Lanza Rot? Lanza, whatever. A third shell. The captain didn't toss them all. Leave it. Help me lift this. Yeah, this is the locked room, right. They kept one of the mermaids in here, and this is also where apparently that crown went. Okay, so this is the captain steward over here. Is this the first mate steward? The fourth mate steward? All the stewards are having a grand old time. Yeah, yeah, so this is that little locked room.
I guess they're... Uh, yeah, so initially they also wanted someone to go in here as well. They wanted to put a guy over here after they attack someone. I remember that specifically being mentioned. I don't remember exactly who or what, but... A third shell. Leave it, help me lift this. Stop, wait, we're set you free. We're to set you free, give it to the... Wait, give it the shell. Do it, hoist it out to the main deck, throw it over, lock the door when you leave. So what exactly happened to this guy? Did he get killed by the monster? Or what exactly did he get killed by? I'm a little confused here. All the stewards are here. Um, I didn't realize I was going to have to fill this one out. Can I still go back without like... Yeah, yeah, so this guy, I think he got spiked as well. Spiked by a terrible beast. Oh shit, what? So this is where they kept all of those beasts. Oh my god. So wait, did the captain make a deal? To at the very least... Yeah, is that his fifth kill? No, I think he's been killing those mermaids for a while longer. So this over here is the captain steward. Who's got that shiny thing. Yeah, is he actually saving the ship over here? 55, hope your summer is going great to Hey, thank you, casual. Welcome back. Thank you, Tommy. Hmm. So again, this is also being told backwards, right? A captured beast fought against its jailer and was spared or spirit rotter for the trouble. Okay. Right, so this is where they kept those beasts. So maybe the captain actually, even though we see him killing a lot of people, maybe he actually saved the ship. Alright, yeah. Use the sword, use the gun, use whatever you need, bro. So captain once again going crazy. So this is the fifth kill. The other one was the sixth. <laughs> Captain be evil? Is he evil though? He's trying to save his ship. He's trying to save his people. But he also murders them, so... Yeah, he's also the one that captured them. <laughs> yeah, maybe he's not so nice. We don't really know why he captured them though at this point. That's probably what we're gonna find out in a sec. An unholy creature's deviant shrieks were greeted with a fatal bullet. Actually, yeah, this might be one of his first kills. You're actually right. Because not until the final chapter is when he kills those other people. You open the chest. <laughs> 
So this is the second... Uh, this is the steward rudder. He took out that thing, whatever it is. That's supposed. That's definitely not supposed to be a flame, is it? Yeah, is that is that Quicksilver? What? Do, yeah, is it mer like Mercury? What are we talking about? Was there Mercury in the shell, or like what's happening here? We're gonna read the story again from start to finish, by the way, after we get all the chapters. Unless it like explains it to us. So what happened to him? Uh, what would we call that? Uh, I guess he got poisoned? Yeah. All fates correct. I guess it's a mercury poisoner, yeah. GG, boys. The whole book is out. Is that it? What happens now if I hit tap? Oh. I can go through the door now. Oh, he just puts it in the... <laughs> Donation accepted. This is a good summary of the story of the opera Din in chronological order if you want to see after finishing. Oh, thank you very much, Raptor. Thank you for the six euro tip. We will definitely have a look at that. Thank you so much for the six euro uh, donation as well. There it is. Programming, design, art, sound, music by Lucas for my dad. Special thanks to a bunch of other people. Taiwanese language consulting, translations and management, localization management. German localist Rolf, danke bitte Rolf. French localization, words of magic. Brazilian Portuguese. All right, guys. Woo! What a game. Okay, so first off, before we um, we watch that video and before we like try and recap the story, this game is really clever. Yeah. Like, I really, I really enjoy how the developer of this game, it seems to be mostly just one guy that did like the vast majority of the work other than like, you know, the localization and all that sort of thing, right? Um, it seems like he's just got his own idea about how you should make a game. Now the UI, it is very confusing initially, and then after you figure it out, it's still kind of confusing and you know, not as useful as you might like it to be. Especially since you have to do quite a bit of the work in this game throughout the book. But it is a really cool way of doing it. If this game was like twice as long, I think it would probably tilt me pretty bad by the end of it. Just because you have to go back and forth and back and forth and it's hard to actually keep track of what's happening where. Um, but I really like this. I mean, this game is very different than, you know, pretty much every other game out there. And I like that this guy is not really playing by the rules, you know? Like there's a lot of rules or like quote unquote rules in, in video game development and this guy's like fuck it I'm gonna do my own thing not just as far as the graphics go but also as far as like the genre goes right this is not a genre we see very frequently at all um, and it's sick it's really nice fun fact this game almost got cancelled because he spent too much on localization the game or localizing the game yeah it seems like there's a lot yeah exactly like I guess they're, br the, they're best practices for the most part, but it's still very easy to just do it the way that all the other game developers do it as well, right? <sighs> so we mentioned this a few times already, but he also made Papers, Please, which is also... Yeah, very different than the majority of games out there, right? Also recommend that one. So really cool. I don't know how well this game did. I haven't heard too many people about it. I mean, it's been on my list of games to play for a while, I suppose, but... Yeah, very nice.
I have a hard time rating a game like this. But I think I'm gonna give it like a... I don't know, like an 8 out of 10 probably. Yeah, I think I'm gonna give this an 8 out of 10. I was considering even higher than that, but... 8? Eight, 8.5? Eight 9 out of 10? Somewhere in that region. I highly recommend it. If this is something you enjoy, you'll really like this. It's pretty sick. Um, the only problem, I guess, with like streaming this game is that it's... Rather confusing because of the bitrate limitations, so it may have been a little bit blurry from time to time, but... Alright, let's see this video then. So this is... A raptor that just linked me a video called The Return of the Obradin, a plot summary. I don't really know exactly how to... Okay, here we go. Linking, uh, clicking the link did not work, but let's see. So this is a video made by Bill T G. All right. In 1802, Robert Witterell, captain of the Oberdin, makes plans to sail from London to the Orient, around the southern Cape of Africa towards Formosa or modern-day Taiwan. The crew of 60 includes Captain Witterell, his wife, his steward, four mates and their stewards, a bosun, a carpenter, a gunner, and a surgeon, each with their individual mate, three midshipmen, 10 topmen, 15 seamen, 7 passengers, including 4 <laughs> guys, <Formosans>. guys, he said. <laughs> uh, 720p is the highest quality. A purser, a butcher, a cook, the ship's helmsman, the ship's steward, and artist Edward Spratt. The ship leaves from London in 1802, stopping in Falmouth to take on supplies for the journey. The Formosans also bring aboard a tall chest containing a glowing shell, which is guarded at all times. While the ship is loaded in Falmouth, supervised by seaman Lars Lind, a rope snaps, <laughs> dropping the cargo on seaman Samuel Peters, brother of Nathan Peters, killing him. A stowaway, who is attempting to come aboard in the cargo, is also killed when the cargo comes loose. Once loaded, the ship sails southwest, past Portugal. Indian seaman Sied Solomon comes down with a lung disease and passes away in his hammock. His shipmate, Renford Rajub, shows signs of the disease soon after, and is examined by surgeon Henry Evans, who confirms it's not tuberculosis and that it's not contagious. Evans prescribes opium, but Renford also succumbs to the illness, despite Dr. Evans' help. The ship sails further south, past the Canary Islands. Second mate, Edward Nichols, intrigued by the Formosan chest, plots to steal the contents. He breaks into the cargo hold, knocking out Huck Sang Lao, one of the Formosan guards, and mm -hmm. opens the chest, revealing a shell. He's interrupted by Italian passenger Nunzio Pasqua, who notices the unconscious Huck Sang Lao. So he fucks him up. Michael stabs Pasqua to cover up his attempt, then flees, leaving Pasqua to die. <laughs> With no other witnesses, Huck Sang Lao is accused and found guilty of Pasqua's murder by Captain Witterell, and sentenced to die by execution. Despite pleas from Bunnan Lim, Lao is executed by firing squad while the remaining crew watch. Artist Edward Spratt sketches the scene for the Justice at Sea drawing. Nichols again plots to steal the shell, convincing several crew members to assist him. Together, they kidnap Bunlan Lim and Itbing Xia along with the Formosan chest, attempting to flee with them in the lifeboats to the nearby Canary Islands. The group is discovered, and topman Timothy Buteman attempts to stop the party, but is shot by Nichols, who escapes with the shell and the hostages. <laughs> Far from the Oberdin, with Xia and Lim tied up, the group is attacked by mermaids. Li Hong is hit with a spear by the mermaids, who surround the two lifeboats. Patrick O'Hagan is hit in the neck with a spear. New subscriber detected. Ooh, sorry, that was probably very loud. Sorry, I bumped up the audio a little bit, so this video would not be so uh, so quiet. Anyways, thank you, RPTK01. Appreciate you. Again, is pulled into the water. It thinks Yeah manages to cut himself free on one of the spears, then makes for the chest, stabbing Nicholas Stewart Samuel Galligan in the neck with a knife dropped by Nixon. The mermaids pull Alexi Topper off overboard. Boon then limb in the throat, while Sia takes the shell from the drawer and puts it in the liquid at the top part of the chest. This releases several flaming columns, stunning the mermaids. The columns burn off Itbing Sia's arms and he passes away, along with Lim. Mm -hmm. Edward Nichols, the only survivor, pulls the three stunned mermaids, each with an additional shell, into the lifeboat. Then returns oh, to the that's board. what he does. Okay, I was a little bit confused, like how these mermaids got on board. I mean, I realized that they were still on the boat, but I thought these were, were dead. But I guess they were stunned by that attack or, like, whatever that was in that chest. 
When he arrives, the only surviving Formosan on the Oberdin, Chiu Tan, shoots Nichols before he has a chance to explain himself. Right. Deserve that the one. The mermaids, the bodies, the shells, and the chest are hauled back on board, and Chiu Tan is brought in front of Captain Witterell for questioning, with Topman Huang Li acting as interpreter. Tan declares that the shell must be protected or the crew will die. One of the mermaids being hauled onto the deck unexpectedly shoots spikes, killing Tan and... And seaman Hamado Diom. You said it again, guys. Another mermaid is being carried into the hold when cook Thomas Sefton jokes about eating it before being fatally struck by the mermaid's tail while he inspects the shell it carries. Right. The sudden movement causes the seaman to, to eat the mermaid, footing, falling down the stairs see, into I the see. hold and crushing seaman William Wassum's neck between the stretcher and the bulkhead. The three mermaids in the Formosan chest are locked in the lazarette. But the captain steward, Philip Dahl, fearing a curse from the mermaid, attacks seaman John Naples in a panic, cutting off his leg. Naples succumbs to his injuries. Wait, 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 hold up. What? Do again? Formos and chest are locked in the lazarette. But the captain steward, Philip Dahl, fearing a curse from the mermaid, attacks seaman John Naples in a panic, cutting off his leg. Naples succumbs to his injuries. Why cut off his leg, though? What's the point in cutting off the guy's leg? He's like, there's a curse! Cut off his leg! Like, what does that do? I don't... Anyways. Mermaid attacks seaman John Naples in a panic, cutting off his leg. Naples succumbs to his injuries despite assistance from surgeon Henry Evans. And Dahl is locked in the lazarette with the mermaids. Dahl manages mermaids don't have legs? I don't think the guy's clever enough for any of that. I feel like if you have a really sharp sword, it's still going to be very difficult to cut off someone's leg. I don't know any of the details, but I've got a feeling that, like, a leg? Really? Isn't that gonna... Anyways. Break free and open the chest, but is burned to death by the mercury light. Sorry, sorry, comes to his injuries despite assistance from surgeon Henry Evans. And Dahl is locked in the lazarette with the mermaids. Yes. Dahl manages to break free and open the chest, but is burned to death by the mercury-like liquid. With a third of his crew now dead, Captain Witterell orders the ship turned around to head back to England. A storm rolls in as the ship heads back, and two hooded figures riding giant crabs climb aboard the ship in search of the mermaids and the shells. Topman Huang Li is struck by lightning as the two figures board. Bad luck. <laughs> and Nicholas Botterelli is speared by one of the riders. Fourth mate John Davies raises the alarm as the crab riders descend below deck. Carpenter's mate Marcus Gibbs confronts one of the riders as they enter the gun deck, throwing an axe, which the crab easily deflects before fatally spiking Gibbs. The other crab rider decapitates surgeon's mate James Wallace and topman Jay Zhang as it makes its way towards the lower decks, then maims the ship's steward, Zungi Sathi, hitting him in the torso with spikes. And then he gets Mid shot. And Charles Hirschdick <laughs> throws a lantern at the rider, setting it on fire and killing it, but also burning himself to death in the process. Yeah, but look. Meanwhile, the first rider spikes butcher Emilio O'Farrell to the wall, who dies shortly after despite assistance from Dr. Evans. The rider invades the Orlop deck, heading for the lazarette, when seaman Charles Minor opens fire, missing the rider and accidentally hitting and killing Zungi Sathi, who'd taken cover on the far side of the port walk. Carpenter Winston Smith lures the rider down to the cargo hold, and as he wrestles with it, is stabbed several times, but manages to shoot it, killing the rider and the crab before Smith passes away. Following the crab rider attack, Purser Duncan McKay and seaman Alexander Booth and Nathan Peters hatch a plan to escape the Oberdeen by stealing a lifeboat. Lars Lind attempts to join them, but is clubbed to death by Peters, who believes Lind is responsible for the earlier cargo incident that killed his brother. Unbeknownst to Peters and the escaping crew, the mermaids have summoned a kraken, which begins to attack the ship, crushing artist Edward Spratt to death while he uses the head. The crew begins to fight off the kraken with swords and cannons, and seaman Abraham Akbar is crushed by a tentacle while lighting a cannon. Hey, when that happens. Another tentacle grabs gunner Christian Wolf and holds him against the lit muzzle of the cannon, while seaman George Shirley attempts in vain to free him before both are killed by the firing cannon. This dislodges another cannon, crushing the third mate steward, Roderick Anderson. Midshipman Thomas Lank and Peter Milroy head to the main deck with cartridge bags to use against the Kraken, but Milroy is grabbed by a tentacle before he can throw the lit cartridge and it explodes. The Kraken begins grabbing the crew throwing Topman Omid Ghoul and Helmsman Finley Dalton into the sea. Mm -hmm. Ripping Topman Maba in half. Sure. Dragging Topman Wei Lee and Bosun's mate Charles Minor overboard. And overturning the lifeboat with the escaping McKay, Booth, and Peters. 
Bosun Alfred Klestel has his arm ripped off fighting a tentacle, while the captain's wife, Abigail Halska Witterell, comes out on deck looking for the captain before she's crushed by a falling piece of the mast. <laughs> captain Witterell enters the lazarette. She survived all of that, only to get crushed by the mast. Demands they call off the Kraken, shooting one mermaid, then stabbing the other, before the last remaining mermaid calls off the Kraken, which leaves as the storm dissipates. As the remaining crew recover from the attack, third mate Martin Perrault comes to the lazarette to set the last mermaid free with the shells, but is spiked by the spooked mermaid. Perrault's steward, Davy James, and first mate steward, Paul Moss, give the mermaid a shell to calm it down, then begin carrying it away. As they leave, a dying Perrault asks that the mermaid see the Oberdin safely back to England. And the pair dump the mermaid and the remaining shells back into the sea. Henry Evans later returns to the now locked lazarette and lets his monkey in through the window before killing it, knowing that the East India Company will likely use a time watch to review the events of the ship and will need a way to access the bodies in the lazarette now that the key is gone. Following the Kraken fight, Bosun oh. Alfred, okay. Alfred Clestel is taken down below by fourth mate John Davies and gunner's mate Bolus Wyatter. Clustal succumbs to blood loss from his missing limb, but casts suspicion on Captain Witterell and his role in calling off the Kraken. Meanwhile, Dr. Evans, along with passengers Emily Jackson, Jane Bird, fourth mate steward Davy James, and first mate steward Paul Moss, attempt to escape on the last remaining boat. They're spotted by topman Leonid Volkov, who stabs Moss in the heart, despite an order from Captain Witterell to let them go. Volkov then attempts to board the fleeing boat, but is shot by Emily Jackson. Hmm. On deck below, Wider and Davies, fed up with the tragedy, begin plotting to mutiny and take the ship east to sell the mermaids in the shells, not knowing that the only remaining mermaid has been put back in the sea along with the shells. Mm -hmm. They're overheard by midshipman Thomas Lank, who alerts the crew to the mutiny plan. Wider stabs Lank in the back as he attempts to flee, but Davies intervenes. In the ensuing struggle to take Wider's gun, it goes off, killing Wider. First mate William Hoskett and seaman Henry Brennan hear the commotion and come down to investigate. Hoskett follows after the wounded Lank, who is crawled to the midshipman cabin, while Brennan, believing Wider's death to be intentional, clubs John Davies, killing him. Sure, as you do. Hoskett finds Thomas Lank bleeding in the midshipman's cabin, but is unable to help him. At this point, only four crew members are left alive. Hoskett and Brennan, topman Lewis Walker, and Captain Witterell. Captain Witterell locks himself in his cabin, and the other crew begin attempting to force their way in, believing the captain still has more shells. The captain opens the door and shoots William Hoskett in the neck, killing him. While Walker sneaks around to the rear of the captain's cabin, Brennan confronts the captain, demanding to know the whereabouts of the remaining shells. The captain informs Brennan that they were dumped overboard, and a fight ensues. Captain Witterell is stabbed in the shoulder, but manages to cut Brennan's throat in the struggle. Lewis Walker surprises the captain, stabbing him in the side, but he manages to club Walker in the head. The wounded captain, now the only surviving member of the crew, goes to the body of his now deceased wife, confessing to having killed her brother, William Hoskett. Overcome with grief, the captain takes his own life. And just like that! <laughs> the mermaid, having been returned to the ocean with the remaining shell, guides the unmanned Oberdin back to Falmouth in 1807. Oh, that's what that is! The company insurance inspector is tasked with determining the fate of the crew. The inspector has provided a book from Henry Evans containing crew pictures and a memento mortem, which allows the inspector to view the moment of death for any dead body found on the ship. Following inspection, the Oberdin sinks in a storm. The inspector sends the report to the East India Company and returns the book to Dr. Evans in Africa. Evans passes away a year later due to illness. And Jane Bird, one of the surviving passengers, mails a letter to the inspector containing the monkey's paw from the lazarette, along with Dr. Evans' book. This allows the inspector to see the final fate of Philip Dahl, Martin Perrault, and two of the three mermaids, finishing Dr. Evans' book and completing the story of the Oberdin. Ay, ay, ay. Bro, I don't know what Lucas Pope smoked when he came up with this storyline, but that is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> this guy does not mess around, man. What the? What in the world? It's a great video, by the way. Great video. Thanks for putting this together. Whew. All right. So yeah, even though I I completed the game, that still <laughs> did not answer every question that I had. But this was sick. Really enjoyed it. Very well done. Very well done. I'll definitely keep an eye out on whatever Mr. Lucas is going to produce in the future. So I believe it says that this game came out in, yeah, 2018. 
And then I think uh, Papers, Please was 2013. So, should be sometime soon, right? Should be sometime soon that he releases something new, assuming he's working on a new game. He is working on a new one already? Let's see. Mars After Midnight? Oh, I did have another couple over here as well. But these are probably a little bit older. Mars After Midnight. An off-colony community support center. Cyclops Anger Management. Qualified Martians only. A small one-bit game I'm working on for play date. All right, man. My next project is called Mars After Midnight. It is a small game for play date. Oh, my God. Wait, what? Wait, the Playdate got this great mechanical crank on the side that's... Wait, what? Alright, I might be a little bit different. <laughs> a little bit different. This was a year ago as well. Interesting. Hmm. Cool. Very fun. Yeah. So, a full version is available of the Oberdin right now. Very nice. Oh, it won a whole bunch of games as well. Winner at the Independent Games Festival, BAFTA, the Game Awards, Independent Games Festival, blah, blah. Okay, yeah. Very cool stuff, man. Very fun game. Highly recommend. I feel like this is definitely one of those games that, like, in hindsight is going to grow in rating, okay? So right now I'm giving it, like, an 8 out of 10. But I wouldn't be surprised if you ask me, like, a year from now that I'm going to give it, like, a 9 out of 10. This was, this was really good.